Savitar. None of you are on your knees. It's a smart move to bow before a deity. You're not God. To be a god, you just have to make people believe you are. No one believes in you. You should, Iris. I hold the power of life and death over all of you. How do you know so much about us? I know you, Caitlin, Cisco, Joe, Wally, the fake Wells. I know your fears, I know your weaknesses, I know you better than you know yourselves. I know your destinies. One shall betray you. One shall fall. One will suffer a fate far worse than death. This is the knowledge I have for you about your everlasting damnation. Go ahead. I am the future Flash. Hello all and welcome to my YouTube. I had something else planned, but due to vicious amounts of car noises, instead I present to you me having a conversation about season three of The Flash. I talked about season one like two weeks ago. My season two video turned into me and the other guy having a staunch debate, so that one didn't really work out. So here we are at season three. <laughs> Recap and review. When Barry Allen creates Flashpoint at the end of season two, we find him living in, in that life in season three. Things go awry in Barry's perfect timeline, and he is forced to run back in time and undo what he did in an attempt to restore his original timeline. That doesn't go as planned when he's no longer in something egregious like Flashpoint, but not everything is as it was. The timeline has changed once more. Barry now has a forensics partner in the new cast member Tom Felton, who plays Dr. Julian Albert. As well, Cisco's brother Dante is dead, and Caitlin has gained ice powers. Past all of that is the rise of a villain known as Dr. Alchemy, a worshipper of the Speed God, and Season 3's big bad, Savitar. There's nothing much going on, but also somehow so much going on for this season of the show that I respect it. The major issue is they try to play with three different ideas instead of spending their entire time on one idea. The ramifications of Flashpoint is interesting, but it's never quite clear how Flashpoint leads into Savitar, and by eight episodes in it doesn't really matter. The idea of alchemy and others cult-worshipping Savitar is super interesting, but they never explain how anyone knows about Savitar. Then it's just full steam ahead with Savitar and his prophecies of the future with a ticking timer on the death of Iris West at the hands of Savitar, when Barry sees that down the line in the future, Iris is going to die at Savitar's hand. The Plot This season serves more so as the culmination of story beats for the last two seasons more than it does serve as a season of its own. For starters, this is the last season that really shackles itself to Barry's mother's death. Saving her and creating Flashpoint was the main crux of the opening of this season, and it set the stage for everything to come. As mentioned in the recap, there's a real issue with this season feeling like it's three different ideas that they tried to bleed into each other. The ramifications of Flashpoint was interesting, and they shook the status of things a bit by the end of the first couple of episodes. The only real difference is the sudden existence of Julian Albert. There's Alchemy and Savitar's followers, which offered this really interesting cult idea that carried the middle bits of the season until they decided who Savitar would be. Now, upon rewatch, I could tell that they were starting to feed the audience answers as to who Savitar was, and it was revealed to be a future time remnant. I thought that made enough sense. Though the season suddenly became about temporal loops and various other things, under all of these beats, the fact that Barry had once ended up in the future and saw Iris was going to die at the hands of Savitar, and they did their best to change the future. It's strange when that's the one part of the story that I didn't entirely care for. Fine enough plot overall, though as when it boils down to it, this season was Barry stopping Savitar from killing Iris. Flashpoint and the cults were just fluff. As for the characters, on hand we have the basic core cast with Tom Cavanaugh also returning to play a new Wells, H.R. Wells, a gentleman who is not a genius, but has a good heart. We also have the new characters of Julian Albert, played by Tom Felton, 
Everyone's chemistry is still on point, and we do watch as characters evolve and change. Barry's growth as he realizes he needs to pay for his mistakes, whether anyone wants him to or not, is very fun to observe. We watch Wally come into his own as he gains super speed, and he learns what it means to be a hero. H.R. Wells is someone we watch evolve and we begin to really care for. Sisko has a darker nature this season due to many things going on, but it proves fruitful for the character as Sisko's emotions play a hand in a lot of the season. Caitlyn's evolution into Killer Frost is still one of the strangest issues this show has. As of now, Killer Frost is a result of Flashpoint and is almost a split personality from Caitlyn, with the end of the season showing that she isn't Caitlyn anymore. Later seasons will immediately throw all of this out the window and pretend she did not get her powers from Flashpoint. Poor Caitlin has one of the most convoluted developments as the show progresses. Iris West in this season, though, is fantastic. While I may not have had much stake in the idea of her dying, her character trying to handle and rectify with having a set date to die was amazing to watch from a character standpoint. Everyone did bring their A-game, one way or another. The you I know from the future, he's not this stupid. Pretty soon, you won't even remember that you're the Flash. And when that happens, this world will become permanent. Time will set like concrete, and nothing will be able to change it back to the way it was. It's fine by me. You know what you have to do. You have to take me back to that night and let me finish what I started. You go to hell! You're taking both of us there! Now who's the villain, Flash? Now who's the villain? The Julian Albert Problem This season serves as a rare occasion where a character that is essentially a new main cast member appears for one season and will never appear again. Julian is, unfortunately, in a rare league that as far as I know involves him and Patty Spivet as characters that appear for a good chunk of a season and will never show up again. It's worse for Julian as he is fairly consistent throughout the whole season and not just the first half or so. We watch this man that appears in the wake of Flashpoint go from callous and unfriendly to a really hard on his sleeve kind of character. He truly fell for Caitlyn and while she didn't want him, he was proving his best to be a kind man. Ending the season having fully meshed with Team Flash and we will never see him again. Tom Felton was contracted for one season, and from what I've gathered, they never approached him for another season. And this show's over now, so it's not like there's another chance. Anyone who puts stock into the character of Julian Albert will just have to watch as season 3 ends, and that's just kind of it. I think they write him off in passing by saying he just kind of heads back home to Europe in season 4. No guest spot, no farewell in the final season. Julian Albert is a rare occasion of just coming and going like nothing. In the end, Flash Season 3 is the weakest of the original three seasons in terms of its own merits. Slightly disjointed and darker in tone, it does have some highlights like H.R. Wells, who has become one of the most beloved Wells in the show. That being said, what it lacks as its own season, it makes up for in the grand scheme of things. Season 3 feels like the end of Barry's arc in a lot of ways with him paying for his mistakes and finally being able to rest while paying for Flashpoint by residing in the Speed Force. Going forward, the show wouldn't rely on really anything from the first three seasons outside of maybe Killer Frost. We'd have new storylines, a new intro, Barry would no longer be bent up out of shape over the death of his family. This season serves as the end of, in a lot of ways of what the show was for the longest time. Going forward, things would still be interesting, but there'd be no more speedster villains until a godspeed a few seasons down the line. There would be a fundamental shift in this show from here on out, with season 3 serving as the last quote-unquote classic-style Flash season. Savitar wasn't fantastic, but he was imposing enough and mostly served to further Barry's story of consequence, rather than to be the big threat zoom or reverse Flash were. Barry's arc comes to a close, and even fun fact, this will be the last time we ever really get to be on Earth 2, until Arrow brings us there like four or five years later for its final season. At the end of the day, season 3 of The Flash really was more the end of an arc than it was its own season. While some things were hit or miss, it wasn't bad. It wasn't amazing, like the first two, but it wasn't bad. And upon rewatch, I found a lot more value in this. Thanks. I know who you are. 